Hi again, everybody. Uh, Mr. Drummond here, uh, picking up uh, where we left off uh, yesterday, talking about Ohio's Constitution. So I figured what we do with today's video is we'd finish talking about the differences between the 1802 Constitution and the 1851 Constitution. And then we would quickly compare um, the federal U.S. Constitution to Ohio's state constitution. Remember, uh, people that live in the state of Ohio are, we remember, we've talked about that idea of federalism a lot, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Federalism, federal government governs the entire nation. Some things only it does, right? We talked about those things like declare war, print money, um, those things where we want to go into it as one nation. Uh, and then we have things that are reserved to the states, right? Making schools, issuing licenses, uh, regulating corporations within their borders, okay? And then we have things that they both do concurrently, right? Um, make laws, have court systems, um, things of that nature. So we're going to compare a little bit about the federal U.S. Constitution and the state of Ohio's constitution, right? Being an Ohioan, you're governed by the United States government. You're also governed by the state government of Ohio. Uh, if you live in Youngstown, you're governed by the city government of Youngstown. You're governed by um, a county government. Uh, so we, we, you know, we talk about federalism, we kind of have that uh, levels of authority. So we're, we'll kind of get back into that. But um, what I thought I'd start uh, with today, get my phone out, is going back to the where we left off yesterday, talking about the differences between the 1802 and the 1851 Constitution. It's that page in your packet. Okay. Um, what it's asking is, remember, three big problems with the 1802 Constitution that we're going to try to fix with the 1851 Constitution. Number one, legislative branch. Right. Remember, three branches of government, legislative branch, the people's elected officials that make laws, elected representatives that make the law. They were way too powerful. Right. So big that they couldn't be checked by either, the, either of the other two branches. OK. Corruption kind of runs rampant. Uh, so legislative branch has way too much power. Second problem, our court system is in uh, ineffective. It's, it's inefficient, okay? We only had two levels, the Supreme Court and Courts of Common Plea. Those are the only two places you could go. So any appeal had to go to the state Supreme Court, which is only one court of one group of people, okay? Um, we're gonna add an appeals level in between there, okay? And the third thing is debt, right? The United, or I'm sorry, the Ohio General Assembly, um, got a little careless with doling out funds, right? Especially like infrastructure projects. Infrastructure are like those things, in those days it would be canals, it would be railroads. Um, important for a state, but the, the state government spent way more than it could or should have, um, created some economic issues in the state. Um, so three big problems, legislative to power, well, legislative branch too powerful, Courts, judicial branch, inefficient. Remember, those judges also have to travel. The, the Supreme Court justices in Ohio had to travel to every county. Not a problem when there were nine counties. Kind of a bigger problem when there were 88 counties. All right. And the third problem is debt. Remember, debt is not negative money. Okay. A lot of people say, oh, the United States has $20 trillion in debt. That means we're broke. No, it means that we owe that amount of money. Okay, now I'm not saying it's a good thing. Some debt is not bad, but it's not negative money. Remember that. So in the state of Ohio, though, debt was a much bigger problem. So legislative branch too powerful, courts inefficient, debt out of control. All right. First problem that asks you to talk about in the um, little chart there where there's the 1802 side and the 1851 side. And it wants you to draw, right? It wants you to draw what did the government look like? and in 1802 and what did it look like in 1851 so those of you that are my students you know my awesome 
artistic skills. All right, so I'm gonna put them on display here. Okay, here's the 1802 setup, right? Here's the legislative branch, big and above, right? Bigger and higher up than the other two branches. These two branches are supposed to be the same size. Okay, but let's, you know, that's not um, a great drawing, but these are supposed to be the same size, right? They're smaller relative to the legislative branch. They're smaller, they're below it, right? All the power is up here. 1851, all right, we start to see a little more equality. Maybe the legislative branch is a bit bigger, a little stronger still, okay? But the executive branch and the judicial branch have moved up and relative to the legislative branch, they're much more powerful. So as long as you had something like that, okay, I'm sure it's not gonna look as nice as this, don't worry about it, okay? Um, but, uh, but it's like that, okay? The other thing that we wanted to look at was what changed as far as different positions within the state government, okay? Different um, uh, jobs within the state government. So <clears throat> going from who chose them, right? In 1802, who picked the governor? And in 1851, who picked the governor? In 1802, who picked the secretary of state? In 1851, who picked the secretary of state? Okay, so if we look at the governor first, right, on that next, if you look down, delete that little chart, okay? Governor was always elected by the people, right? Elected in 1802, <coughs> elected in 1851, okay? Secretary of State appointed by the legislature in 1802, elected in a, after the 1851 Constitution. State judges used to be appointed by the legislative branch. Now they're gonna be elected by the people. And finally, the General Assembly, right? The members of the State Senate, the State House of Representatives, always elected, even in 1802, still elected. So we're seeing two things happen here. Not only is the legislative branch losing power and getting smaller, but the people are starting to have, <clears throat> excuse me, more power, right? We talk about that idea of popular sovereignty. Remember the idea of the word popular means people, right? Population, someone that's popular, right? Has a lot of support, people like them, okay? Popular people, sovereignty, the word reign, right in the middle there. Popular people, sovereignty power, people power. We're seeing that expand in the state of Ohio. The people are in charge of giving people jobs in the government, right? And that's kind of the whole deal with a democracy, right? The people should have power, okay? So that's the end of comparing the two constitutions, okay? Um, 1851 constitution. <clears throat> How does it address some of these problems? Legislative branch is too powerful in 1802. <clears throat> Excuse me. In 1851, we're going to take power away from the legislative branch by making them not responsible for appointing judges and people in the executive branch. We're also going to add positions to the executive branch and to the judicial branch, right? So we're making other branches more powerful while taking some power from the legislative branch. Number two, the courts were inefficient, okay? 1802, second problem, courts inefficient. How are we gonna fix that? Well, we're gonna say, hey, Supreme Court, you stay in one place. You stay put where you're at, people will come to you. But the most important thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a level of courts. Court of Common Pleas, then you go to a district court of appeals, and then you get to the state Supreme Court in Ohio or in uh, Youngstown, down uh, downtown, I think it's on Federal Street. Um, is there's there's a, a courthouse for the Seventh District Court of Appeals for the state of Ohio. Okay, remember federalism. We've got a federal court system that we talked about before we left. We've got a state court system. Okay, so don't get confused with district court. Okay, and the federal system, right? You break a federal law, you're going to start in the federal system at the district court level. Then you go to a circuit court of appeals, then the Supreme Court is up here. In Ohio, it's very similar, okay? But we don't call the lowest level the court, the district court. We call it the court of common pleas, right? The word common means, you know, uh, there's a lot of it, right? There are a lot of cases at the court of common pleas. Then we get district courts of appeal. Then we get 
the state Supreme Court. Okay, so remember those two separate systems, right? These people are interpreting federal law in the federal courts. These people are interpreting state law in the state courts. Okay, let's keep talking, okay, about the differences between, and the similarities, more similarities than differences between the federal constitution and the Ohio constitution, okay? So if you go in your little packet to where it says, Comparing constitutions, Ohio, okay, it looks like that, the little magnifying glass and whatnot, okay. I'm not going to read it to you today because really most of what we need to talk about is right in the activity. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at that second page where it says the U.S. Constitution on the left side and the Ohio Constitution on the right side, and we're just going to read those two excerpts and talk about I'm going to talk. Unfortunately, you're going to listen, but um, I wish we could talk about it. Um, what, we, what do we see that is the same? What do we see that is different? Okay. So the first excerpt from the U.S. Constitution, it says, the executive power shall be vested in a president of the United States of America. We talked a, a lot about that, right? All the roles of the president, commander in chief, the party leader, the economic uh, keeper, the, the keeper of the economy, the um, uh, head of state, right? Um, the chief executive, the president is in charge of the entire executive branch, making sure the laws get executed, get carried out. In Ohio, the Ohio constitution excerpt says, the supreme executive power of this state shall be vested in a governor. What's the difference? what we call them, right? The governor is still the head of the entire executive branch in the state of Ohio. The governor is still in charge of executing the laws of the state of Ohio, right? President's executing laws for the federal government over the entire United States. Governor is gonna be in charge of executive, um, or executing laws of the state, okay? But they're both doing the same job, we just call them something different, okay? Governors in states, are the chief executive, <coughs> presidents are the chief executive in the United States federal government. Next excerpt, the judicial power of the United States shall be vested in one Supreme Court and in such inferior, inferior means below, in such inferior courts as the Congress may from time to time ordain and establish. We talked about this before we, before we were separated from one another. Only one court is called for in the U.S. Constitution. That's the Supreme Court, right? They said, hey, Congress, you figure out what the rest of it looks like. But you got to have a Supreme Court. Everything else is up to you. The, Const the federal Constitution also talks about what types of cases the Supreme Court um, should hear, um, or something called original jurisdiction, about what, what, what cases the Supreme Court can hear first. That was kind of the the issue in Marbury v. Madison, um, don't get a little off topic, but all, they only talk about what court do we have to have in the federal system according to the Constitution? Supreme Court. Whose job is it to figure out everything else? Congress, U.S. Congress. Let's look at Ohio's, how is it different? Ohio's Constitution says, the judicial power of the state is vested in a Supreme Court. So far, we're pretty similar. Courts of, common, uh, courts of appeals, courts of common pleas, and divisions thereof. So what is Ohio's constitution? A little bit more what? A little bit more specific about the structure of the courts, okay? It says, yeah, you gotta have a Supreme Court, but the 1851 constitution also says, and you gotta have courts of common plea, and you gotta have district courts, okay? But here's what it says at the end. <clears throat> and such other courts inferior to the Supreme Court as may from time to time be established by law. So remember that word inferior, below. Supreme Court has to be at the top. That's what the word supreme means, right? You get a supreme pizza, you can't get more pizza than that. It's everything is on that, okay? Supreme, the top, uh, top level. So Supreme Court has to be at the top. You gotta have these other courts and then you can establish other courts below that. Um, it's up to you by law. Who makes laws? the legislative branch. So 
very similar, okay? Both have a Supreme Court. They both have levels, but the state government, <coughs> the state government of Ohio is far more specifically set up as far as the court system in the Constitution. And uh, they're both allowed to make inferior courts, okay, below the Supreme Court. Number three, all legislative powers herein granted shall be vested in a Congress, <coughs> man, Congress, which shall consist of a Senate and a House of Representatives, okay? The, and we talked about that, right? Legislative branch, two chambers, <coughs> Senate, two per state. Doesn't matter if you're California, the biggest state in the country, or if you're Montana. I think Montana is the smallest, maybe Idaho. Either way, they each get two senators, okay? We talked about the compromise between the big states and the little states. Everybody gets two, so 50 states times two, 100 senators. Then the bigger states get more representation in the lower house, the House of Representatives, okay? To become a law, you gotta get through both. So that's how the federal government is set up. How about the state government, okay? The legislative power of the state shall be vested in a general assembly consisting of a Senate and a House of Representatives. What's the difference? what we call them. Congress, right? That's what we call the U.S. Senate and the U.S. House. That's called Congress. We call the General Assembly, the State Senate and the House, uh, the State House of Representatives, right? It's, it's just a different nomenclature. Look that word up. I think I used it, right? Maybe not. Uh, but this is a different name, okay? They both do the same job. Which one in the state of Ohio do you think there are more people in? the state house of representatives, fewer state senators, right? Which one do you think is considered the upper chamber in the state of Ohio? Just like in the US government, it's the state senate, okay? So <clears throat> pretty easy there, right? Remember the United States by 1851 was coming up on its 80th anniversary. So we'd had this government for a while. So Ohio's government is gonna look at the US federal government and say, that seems to be working okay. Never mind the fact that in 15 years we're going to fight a civil war. Um, but they're looking at the government and saying, yeah, that's been around for 80 years. Maybe we should kind of take some lessons from it. Okay. Uh, the House of Representatives shall be composed of members chosen every second year. Talked about that. The House of Representatives is the closest to the people because they serve only two years at a time. So if you get elected and do something to tick off the people in your district, they're gonna have a chance to throw you right out of office pretty quick. So House of Representatives in the state or in the federal government, two year terms. How about in the Ohio state government? Representatives shall be elected biennially, by, bicycle, um, biped, right? Two, by, every two years, biennial. All right. Uh, their term of office shall continue two years. So, so far, so good. Here's the difference. No person shall hold the office of state representative for a period longer than four successive terms. What do we have there? Something we didn't have, we don't have in the federal system. Term limits, right? Four terms, eight years, right? Four times two, and then you're out for at least one cycle. Okay, got to get somebody else in there. Federal government, you can serve in the House of Representatives and in the Senate for forever, as long as the people keep sending you back. Next one, federal side, U.S. Constitution. The Senate of the United States shall be composed of two senators from each state chosen for six years. Okay? Remember, Senate a little further away from the people. They're supposed to be more deliberative, right? We sometimes give them the term of trustee, meaning, you know, we elect a person to the Senate because we think they have good judgment. They're not always going to be doing exactly what the people call for. There's some people, uh, I think the Senate was once called the great cooling tray, right? The, the house gets all worked up and sends all these bills to the Senate where the Senate's supposed to let everything cool down a little bit. So they get six years, right? If you vote for something that you think is unpopular, but you think it's right, you got a few years to convince people that you were right in the Senate. Also, you got to be older to be in the Senate. So they're supposed to be a little bit 
hey, let's take it easy, right? Everyone's doing what the people want. But remember, the founders were a little bit nervous about the people, right? Some, some of our founders called the people rabble, right? Some of them thought they were no more than a mob. So the Senate in the U.S. system is supposed to, keyword supposed to, be the place where things kind of get, oh, let's pump the brakes a little bit. Okay, let's look at the state of Ohio as I drop my phone. All right, senators shall be elected to and hold office for terms of four years. So it's different and similar at the same time. How's it different? Well, they get four years instead of six. How's it similar? It's still longer than whose term? Members of the House, okay? <clears throat> no senator, no person shall hold the office of state senator for a period longer than two successive terms of four years. So again, term limits there, none in the U.S. Senate. Longer terms tell us what? Maybe the state Senate is supposed to kind of carry out that same function, right? We want people that represent the, the people have power, clearly. But just because everyone's doing something doesn't necessarily mean it's right. Just because it's popular doesn't mean it's right, okay? Um, you know, interning Japanese Americans during World War II Probably was very popular at the time, but it wasn't right. Now, that was done with an executive order, not a law. But you see what I'm saying, right? The people can be wrong sometimes. We want to listen to the people. We want to represent the people. That's what the House of Representatives does. The Senate is supposed to do what they think is right. Um, they shouldn't. They're still accountable to the people, of course, but they give, we give them a little extra leeway, okay? Okay. Two more. Every bill which shall have passed the House of Representatives and the Senate shall, before it become a law, be presented to the President of the United States. If he or she approve, he or she shall, shall sign. But if not, he or she shall return it with his or her objections to that House in which it shall have originated. What do we call that? We call that a veto. Right? It's one of those checks and balances that we talked about. The president, what's unique about the president? He or she is the only person in the whole system that was what? Elected by everyone. Okay, So they have a unique opportunity to veto legislation. All right, They can look at something and say, you know what? I disagree with that. The people, every person in the United States that's eligible to vote had an opportunity to come out and vote for me they picked me so I must know they must like kind of my ideas on stuff and I don't think you're doing what's right for the people so I'm going to veto that legislation I'm going to stop it I'm going to check you legislative branch okay let's look at Ohio every bill which has passed both houses of the general assembly shall be presented forthwith that means quickly to the governor for his or her approval. If the governor approves an act, he or she shall sign it. It becomes law. If he or she does not approve, he or she shall return it with their objections in writing to the house in which it originated. Sound familiar? It should, because it's the exact same process, right? Bills, before they become laws, remember we talked about, you know, I'm just a bill on Capitol Hill and all those sorts of things. House, Senate, President. Got to get through all three, okay? State of Ohio, House, Senate, Governor, okay? Got to get through all three, okay? Governors in Ohio can veto. Governors in, or presidents in the federal system can also veto, okay? Um, there's some differences with how that works, but for our purposes, that's all you need to know. Governors have the power. Again, they're the only person in the state government. Well, that's not true. Supreme Court justices are elected in Ohio. So still though, they're elected by all the people in the state of Ohio. Members of the General Assembly are only elected by people in their little district or their Senate district. So um, they have the power to stop that, okay? Check, just like we have checks and balances in the federal government, we need them in the state government, okay? <clears throat> Last thing, if two thirds of that house, that house being when the president sends it back, they send it back to where it started. If two-thirds of that house where it started 
shall agree to pass the bill, it shall be sent together with the objections to the other house by which it shall likewise be reconsidered. And if approved by two thirds of that house, it shall become a law. Another example of checks and balances, right? Overriding a veto, the veto override, okay? You need two thirds of the House and the Senate, okay? Because again, yes, the president's elected by everyone, but who's closest to the people? The House and the Senate. So if a bill, <coughs> you know, right now, I don't think we could get the House and the Senate to agree, two thirds of them to agree that the sky is blue. Sometimes it feels that way. So if two thirds of the House and two thirds of the Senate all agree to something, it must be pretty popular. It must be something that people want. So we give them the power to override the president. Okay, let's look at Ohio. We don't want one person standing in the way of what the people's elected representatives, if enough of them agree, want. If three-fifths, this is Ohio now, if three-fifths of the members elected to the House of Origin vote to repass the bill, it shall be sent to the other house, which may also reconsider the vote on its passage. If three-fifths of the members elected to the second house vote to repass it, it becomes law. Same situation, right? Except it's what? It's a little bit harder in the state of Ohio, right? Three-fifths is, or no, I'm sorry, reverse that. So yes, this is why I teach social studies, not math. You need 60%, two-thirds is 66% uh, in this U.S. House, right? You need a two-thirds vote of the U.S. House and the U.S. Senate. You need three-fifths in the state of Ohio. So that's only 60%, right? So it's a little easier to override a, is that right? I know the government of it, but the, the yeah, the numbers, yeah. You need 66, two thirds is 66%, right? So that's more people, if my memory serves. More, 66 is bigger than 60, right? In the US House and Senate, you need 66% of those people, okay? To vote to override a veto. You need three fifths in the state of Ohio, which is only 60%, right? So it's a little easier and that kind of checks out, right? The legislative branch is supposed to be the most powerful branch. Ohio used to have a crazy, crazily powerful legislative branch. So you only need to get 60% of them together. Okay, that's the hardest thing I've done in a while is fractions. Okay, so big, big similarities, okay? On all the big things, they are very, very similar. A couple key differences would be what we call the president, right? Versus what we call the governor, what we call the head of the executive branch. Um, another thing that we didn't talk about as much in here, okay? Um, did I just skip it? No, I didn't talk about it. But another key difference, we talked about it earlier, uh, is... In the federal system, the president appoints federal judges. In the state of Ohio, we elect judges. Okay, so that's a, another big difference. Um, there's term limits in the state of Ohio on elected uh, on governors. There's term limits on presidents as well, and there's term limits on the legislative branch, which there are not term limits in the um, in the federal system in the legislative branch. So, quick rundown of the differences between the federal government's constitution and the state government's constitution, okay? Um, hope this helps you as you go through your, um, as you go through your uh, assignments. Um, again, um, we, we tried a Zoom meeting today. It wasn't real well attended, uh, but I get that people are busy. I get that people, you know, a lot of people are watching nieces, nephews, brothers, sisters. I totally get it. Okay, I'm gonna keep posting the videos if these are helpful then we'll just do that. Um, but, you know, I, I'm going to try another Zoom meeting just in case maybe a couple people find a few minutes in their day. So keep on the lookout for that. <coughs> um, keep staying safe, keep staying healthy. And uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. See you later.